Hi and welcome to this reflective snippet. This week, which was beginning on Sunday the 27th of January, so that was when the children arrived at my home, um, and then these things sort of happened throughout the week, um, the children decided that they were going to go on a big walk, and they wanted to go on an adventure. Um, I've I used to do a lot of things with the children, like uh, take them on activities, uh, try and create activities for them, do a lot of things with them. And um, what I've noticed in our home is that now the children want to be entertained. They um, feel that I should um, do it. There's not really a choice. It's more like you should and if I don't they feel upset and they feel like I'm not spending time with them. Whereas now I'm actually trying to spend quality time with them and get to know them and have discussions with them and um, speak about a lot of different issues of truth and really like try and emotionally connect with them in the sense of they, um, me feel them and give, and, and give them the opportunity to discuss things that are in their lives and, and those, that's the kind of relationship I want with them now. Now doing things, I still enjoy doing things with the kids, but because of um, having done a lot of things with the kids but not really um, connected with the children, I'm trialling something different now and experimenting with it. And I'm also trying to get, uh, give them the opportunity to actually choose to do things on their own even if someone else doesn't want to do it with them. Um, so this is one of those times. So, so um, for example, like the boys, uh, well all of the kids love bike riding and, and we all love bike riding actually as a family. But um, the kids really love bike riding. And we have these massive, like we have this dirt road and these massive hills. Like they're probably like, literally, like kind of like that angle. Yeah. Um, and they go down and then sort of down and then there's like a huge dip and then they go up to an another place. And so they've, they've been like riding down there and they're like, can we go? And I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, yep, sure you go. <laughs> so because I'm not there, you'll probably be fine. <laughs> so I won't have my fear, fear to contend with. Um, Anyway, so they, they now regularly ride down these like really big hills and, and they have a really good time doing so. So that was sort of, and after they'd done that a few times, and I was like, you know, this is actually a really good thing because they came back like really excited and they'd had a really good time and, and this feeling in them of like, yeah, we, we can do this, you know, like we're quite capable of doing this and we don't have to have an adult around and, you know, we can do adventures on our own. And, and when I was a kid, you know, we were off, gosh, since I was like tiny, like I can't, before I was like seven, we were off doing little adventures because um, we lived on a, a uh, sort of like a manor house in England and it had like large grounds that backed onto a golf course and we were just off all day playing around, around outside. And I've just noticed that the children aren't like that and that's due to the way that um, the dad, Peter and I have parented them um, and, and I feel like it's a problem. So I'm trying to encourage them now to to if they've got a desire to do something that's not um, you know going to harm anyone else or harm themselves that they do it. So anyway so this time it was about going on a, on a walk and um, they want to do a big adventure and they've wanted me the bedroom me to go with them and I said to them look I, I haven't, hadn't been feeling very well and I was like no um, but you're welcome to go. I said what you need to there's a few things you need to do though you need to tell me the route you're going on so that if something happens and there's an emergency I know the quickest way to find you um, and then you also need to give me um, information on your personal protective equipment PPE they've just done a white card course um, I'll explain that in a minute and they also had to give me a rundown of um, first aid overview of potential things that might happen while they're on their their expedition and how they deal with those those situations and what gear they might need to take um, in order that while they're away they have everything they need that they can get help fast because um, in Australia obviously there's a lot of snakes and um, spiders and all kinds of things and also the the gully they were walking down has a lot of rocks and trip hazards and fall hazards and stuff like that so they need to just take something that and understand like what they're going to do in those situations um, so that was what I said to them um, and yeah, it was very, very interesting. Like um, once I'd said that that was a requirement, and then they were free to go. Um, Charlie like sits down and goes, "Oh, gosh, what was started as such a small little walk has just ended up as such a big deal." And I was like, "What?" He was like, "I was like, what are you on about?" No, um, I, he's he's has a feeling of quite a lot of condescension to him. And I said, "Hold on, Charlie. Like you've just said, like, what is your purpose of that comment?" So I said, "Charlie, what's going on?" And he said, and I said, you know, what's driving that comment? 
and because he'd gone like oh I'm more terrible and I don't want to be like doing the wrong thing and I said no no you just need to figure out why and it was good we had this discussion about well not discussion he he ended up saying to me he goes well I just don't want to have to do all those things you've told me and so I'm trying to get you to change my mind uh, change your mind and I said well why didn't you just say mom I don't want to do all of that and I want you to change your mind like, why did you need to go about it in a way that was like sort of not very nice towards me like there's a feeling of mum you're making it hard for me and I said you know that's that's quite you're, you're attempting to manipulate me by by the way that you've just acted with me and um, and he was like and it was just very interesting like to raise this and that he actually could see in him in, in, in himself that he had um, tried to get something that he wanted without being just straight up about it. So, so yeah, it was just um, an interesting example of um, that one, he, you know, the injuries that, well, what we have fostered in him is that he now feels that he can use underhanded means to get to what he wants um, by basically being quite unkind to someone emotionally. It also highlights that he doesn't really want to take all the effort to do all the things and he was prepared to not go on the walk just because he didn't want to organize all the gear. Um, so his desire to actually go on the walk wasn't as big as his like annoyance at having to actually like do it safely or think about certain issues that could occur along the way. And I learnt that in the past, and a lot of the time even still, is that when um, he makes certain comments like that, I actually will back down and let him do the thing that he always wants to do, which obviously means that he knows that if he does that, in uh, a lot of the times for him, um, it will actually get him what he wants. Um, now his dad does that, and so does my dad, and so does um, uh, you know a lot of different people. So there's a perfect attraction, and it's just something he's learned, and now we're trying to challenge it. It also highlighted that when I raised with him, like, no, this isn't a very nice thing that you're doing. Like, this is actually trying to um, you know pull someone down rather than or make them feel bad in order to get what you want that instead of him going oh yeah I do that why do I do that he was like oh I'm so terrible and he went into this sort of fake um, upsetness about it um, and I said well that's not actually you know even going to be productive for you because you're not even going to find out why you want to do this in the first place so there were so many different things just from that one comment that we we worked out and um, I felt like it was a really good opportunity as far as the walk went they did end up going um, and but they didn't go as far as they were, they were going to go and um, I'm hoping that they'll do a lot more different adventures like that um, so I mentioned before that they've done a white card course and a first aid course um, what we did is there's a lot of online courses that you can do and they we did they don't have a certificate for it um, but they sat down and they did the um, yeah they did the online components of those two courses and then I gave them a, a test and a rundown um, so for instance a white card course is a construction a safety construction course it's an oh and s course to do with construction and you watch a whole heap of videos and then you answer a lot of different questions um, in different scenarios about what you do so what kind of fire extinguisher do you use for different kinds of fires um, what kind of um, PPE or personal protective equipment do you need for certain types of jobs so hard hat uh, gas mask or face mask um, eyewear uh, you might need like you know um, glowing vests or gloves or certain you know boots and all these different things that's for your P P what we call PPE personal protective equipment um, yeah it, uh, it has like a lot of different things that you do under different like uh, it gives you a bit of a CPR you know what you do mouth to mouth and all those things how to um, oh, so that's the first aid component is our CPR and gives you the theory behind CPR. You don't get the practical component, but you get CPR. Um, and then it gives you like how to bandage for snakes, um, how to, all, all, like all kinds of things. Like if someone is lying there and they seem like they're unconscious, how do you approach them? What do you do? You know, um, how do you do a splint? Um, how do you do a, you know, if someone's got a bone sticking out, how do you bandage that up? All kinds of different things that they do so they did the online component which was interesting in itself like there was a lot of uh, fighting um, for the first little while for that they were required to do that because there's a company that I'm a director of and it runs a 
uh, what we call a volunteer selection program um, and it's where um, people who want to volunteer for the organisation they come along and they have a basically it's like an assessment period um, for them to sort of get an idea about what, what volunteering for the organisation is really like and for us to assess whether or not their attitude is, is, is in the right place um, at this time to be a volunteer and that means that they have you know a feeling or a, a growing desire for God and God's way um, and to live that with their whole hearts and to actually love you know love others and love themselves and, and do what everything in their lives um, in a loving way and to be truthful um, in the sense of truthful about themselves and their own condition but also truthful with others and upholding truth in the world and have faith you know in, in the process that that it is going on now no one has to, it's a non-profit organization so no one has to um, be involved um, it's just that if you do want to become a member at some point you must uphold the constitution and so the selection project program is about assessing people on where they're at right now and what their future desire might um, you know what they're demonstrating their future desire might be um, because if if the if the future desire is like heading in a direction towards God's way well those people you can work with because their attitude is that they want to to do something um, God's way if their attitude is heading away and like no I want to do it my way they're not they're not good that's not a, a good candidate to be a volunteer at this time um, it, they they just need to go and do it their way um, but the organization needs people who want to do it God's way so and who have an aspiration to do it God's way. Yeah, so the VSP is um, a combined effort um, with Jesus and Mary mentoring Tristan and I um, in becoming leaders of that program. And um, the children are going to be attending some of the days in there. So they need to have the same qualifications or have done the same um, requirements of the participants who turn up. And that involves doing a white card um, OHNS safety course. Um, and for them, they need to have a first aid certificate not not all the participants need to have one um, but I wanted the children to actually have an experience of first aid so that um, because they're now living outside on their own and they often get cuts and wounds and you know hurt themselves in different ways that they also can have an idea of how to actually clean themselves up so it was quite fun doing those courses um, and then I did like little um, practical assessments with them where they had to put on all their PPE so I'd give them a scenario and say okay you're going into a chemical shed, it's close inside quarters, what are you going to wear? And then they'd put on all their gear to show me what they had to wear if they were going into that or um, you, you, you see you know um, there's a fire, there's an electrical fire, what extinguisher are you going to use? And then they'd tell me what extinguisher they were going to use. So um, yeah, it was pretty fun. And then for their first aid, it was quite cool too. And we ended up like they ended up wanting to do CPR, so I had to go out doing CPR on. I think they're doing it on dollies. I know what did they use? They used something because it was going up and down. I can't remember. They got it was just quite funny. They found different things that they could like try their CPR on, and and then they would try. They would they weren't doing the CPR, but they were like indicating on me where they should actually do the CPR on each other. <laughs> and it was like that was all in the wrong place. So so we had to like modify all of all of those different things. Um, and and it would be really good um, at some point in the future when um, probably when I redo my <clears throat> first aid certificate in a year or so. Um, I might, I'll probably sign them up and they can come and do the practical component as well. But um, yeah, so we just learned like teaching the kids a lot of different things and I, I feel like if uh, the more skills the children have and the more experiences they have, the more independent they are and going off on adventures isn't a problem after that because anything that happens, they have at least the theory of what to do in that situation. Um, and I feel like it's a, yeah, really a really good thing for kids to actually experience different things on their own and to begin to realize that they ca are quite capable. Um, I feel that as a parent I have indicated to them in so many different ways that they're incapable or can't do certain things without me or you know and the dad's also done the same and has these feelings that they need him or that they're not competent or capable because they're too small or they're children or whatever and I don't feel that's correct. I, I feel that they're more than capable and it's actually been um, my fears and my addictive emotions of wanting them to need me um, that has caused them to feel this way 
and so now I want to correct that as well. So there's a lot of a lot of correction that is happening in our in my household. Um, as I've mentioned in a previous video, uh, Peter and I are separated, and so he lives in a different household, and he's not doing the things that I'm doing at the moment. Um, so that's interesting even in itself because the children go from the environment with, with me and have one sort of set of expectations and then they go back into an environment that has completely different expectations and a completely different feeling of what, what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Um, and we talk about that um, with the children and like, the children talk to me about that and say how they find it quite challenging or the things they find hard to do in my home in comparison to Pete's home or the things I find hard to do in Pete's home in comparison to my home. And I find that quite fascinating as well. Um, but what I do notice is across the board, they're reflecting, like uh, Pete also shares stuff that happens at his house and I share um, some of the stuff that I'm doing at um, my house. I don't always share, well, he's gonna, you, Pete, you're going to know everything uh, that, that's happening here now. Um, sometimes I'm not sharing exactly what I'm doing because, um, and as Pete knows and we've talked about, he also needs to have a feeling inside of his own heart that he really wants to do it and that it comes from a place of his own desire. And at the moment he knows that there's certain things in him that he doesn't really want to do that. And so if he does do it, all he's going to be doing is being quite hypocritical about it. Um, the, the problem comes though is that we're not a united front um, in the sense of that we, and I don't mean that we're both taking the same actions in not being a united front. I mean that we both have emotionally different expectations and standards. Um, and that I'm noticing is the largest problem in a family. So, you know, when parents are like, well, we have to agree on this and, and whatever. If you don't agree in your heart with what your husband or your wife is doing, you're not a united front. Even if you, you, you say the same thing, unless you have the same feeling in you, the kids know they can get away with it and they will and it's not because they're being bad or naughty it's that they feel oh no our parents aren't united here we can get around this if we do this thing with mum she's going to be okay with that if we do this thing with dad he's going to be okay with that um you know they know not not through you telling them not through them even verbally picking up anything it's through the feeling that comes out of out of a parent and the children are responding to that all the time so, yeah, it's quite fascinating at the moment with what's happening, um, with what's happening, and um, I've noticed that the relationship between the parents is so important to work out, because if you don't have a relationship, um, like if you don't work your relationship out, that's just played out with the kids, and there's a lot of things that happen that aren't, aren't great, like for instance, if you not don't have good relations with your wife and you know or husband, you often are using the children to get certain emotional um, needs met, or you have expectations on the children um, that you'd usually have on your um, husband and wife. And it's not fair to have expectations on your wife or husband either. Um, but I feel like there's there's two steps. It's like two consenting adults. Um, you know they're making choices and they can leave. When you start demanding and expecting from a child and you start setting up that kind of relationship, I feel there's a lot of um, damage that's actually done to the child, emotion, particularly emotionally, um, though it can also be physical and intellectual and all, you know, and all and spiritually. Um, but emotionally and spiritual damage, I feel, is, is very, very, very damaging um, to children. And so working at the relationship between the parents is like number one priority. Well, working at your relationship with God is number one priority relationship with partner or soulmate is your second biggest priority and then relationship with others and children come in with others and need to like I feel it's very important to to sort those relationships out um, but yeah it is fascinating to watch the children between households and with different parents and the different things that come up that are similar in both households and the things that come up that are different in both households um, and yeah, it's very fascinating. And um, maybe I'll talk about that at another time. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this snippet and I'll see you next time.